Bam, 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 bam. What is up, YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. It's a top five Tuesdays, and today's top five are my top five favorite moments of Captain America Civil War. I thought this would be a cool one to do because today is literally the day that the Blu ray and DVD comes out, and I don't know about you guys, but I am pumped to get that. Oh my goodness, I'm going to watch it several, several times um, over the week, um, probably the weekend as well. Can't wait to see the, the special features and really, really dig in. But before I get into the video, i got to drop another line about our sponsor. Guys, we are doing a contest on the Den of Nerds for the entire month of September. I'm giving away a ton of comic books. I'm giving away a ton of t-shirts, original artwork, and stuff like that as the grand prize. And Short Fuse Media Group has agreed to put their anthology of indie heroes that are under their new publishing line as a part of the prize pool. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Go give Short Fuse a little bit of love. I'll put their website in the description below. They are an awesome company. Gush, gush, gush. Love those guys over there. And honestly, the Heroes Ignited Anthology, wow, there's a lot of good characters in there. We're talking about dope comic characters. Check that stuff out. Uh, I'm telling you, it's really, really awesome. Now, getting right into this video, guys, I st I'm going to start with an honorable mention, as I usually do. And the honorable mention goes to this really awesome scene in which Captain America... Oh, by the way, spoilers. I should probably mention this. Spoilers. Duh. If you haven't seen this movie, don't watch this video. Like, you're crazy. I know there's people out there that are kind of into the room. We've got this, like, spoiler society thing going on where people like to be spoiled and then they go in and see it or you know they like to watch commentary about things and not the thing itself i'm not a fan guys go watch the movie then come back to this video or let this video play you know muted uh you know for my views and uh stuff like that but uh getting back into the honorable mention this was a dope scene and there were a lot of scenes in this movie that were like so good that like i wanted to just stop the movie and do a three-hour movie of just that scene there's, there was a lot of scenes like that. They're really, really cool. I think that's a really good sign for your movie, right? Like, this scene's so good, I want to watch two hours, three hours of it right now. Okay, so <laughs> let me just tell you what the scene is. It's that part where Cap, Falcon, and Bucky are in the little Volkswagen Beetle, and they're on the run. And this is where, you know, the scene where he stops to meet Sharon Carter and get the intel from her or whatnot. And just the hilarity back and forth between Falcon and Winter Soldier, who do not like each other. And, you know, can you put your seat up? No. And then they kiss, and then they both, like, give that thumbs up and smile. Uh, it was awesome. I, I, I wanted to see a movie with Cap, Bucky, and Falcon forced to, like, go on a road trip during the summer or something. And they just have that dynamic the whole time. I just thought, oh, my goodness. It would be hilarious. They're all incredible actors. And I thought that scene was really, really cool. It doesn't quite cut the top five, but definite honorable mention. And I'm sure you love that scene, too, if you've seen the movie. It's really, really funny. So let's get in to my f top five moments. Now, my top five scene, their number five, rather, goes to the scene with Thunderbolt Ross when he comes in and briefs all the Avengers on the Soviet Accords. I thought this scene was dope for a couple different reasons. First of all, it's awesome to see Thunderbolt Ross back in the mix. Really, really hoping they backdoor in some Red Hulk eventually. That would be incredible. But it's been really, really cool to see them bring these characters back um, just to show that there is a, a straight through line, a straight continuity from Iron Man all the way to now. And, you know, he's obviously from that Incredible Hulk movie, but he had that awesome... Uh, after credit scene in that movie with Tony Stark kind of setting up the whole MCU uh, so it was a really nice callback plus I felt like the scene itself kind of catches you up on everything that's happened in the MCU it's a nice way to do that kind of exposition I thought that scene was it was just a really intelligent way to get all that information across you start to see the seeds being planted of the big disagreements Cap's like uh uh you know this person's like yes uh you know Tony's really quiet you you, you get the whole vibes of the movie it sets everything up really nice and I thought it was a really nice scene so that scene with Thunderbolt Ross briefing them on the Soviet Accords is my five or my is my five spot rather so 
Let's go to number four. Number four is a great action sequence. This is when Cap finds the shabby little apartment that the Winter Soldier has been living at. This leads to a big chase, and it culminates by them being captured by the government and brought to Ross's facility. This scene's awesome for a number of different reasons. It starts with a really slow build, very emotional uh, Cap and Bucky, they they kind of slug at each other. Like, Bucky's pretending that he's not fully recovered, that he doesn't remember everything, that, you know, he's, you know, just still a little bit of the Winter Soldier. He doesn't really want to embrace his humanity at all. He's probably feeling just so guilty for all the things that he's done, even though he was brainwashed, that he doesn't want to be a human. He doesn't want to connect with anybody, especially Steve, who is the whole... He's, he's the epitome of of justice and of goodness so if you're a guy who's guilty and feeling you know bad a certain which way why would you want to yeah oh what's up cap yeah no it's really awesome that you're so noble and everything you know blah 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 so the scene starts like that and then the chase itself was just so incredible like wow it was awesome to see them running kind of you know faster than cars like they're super uh, heroes you know they cap and bucky both have the superhero serum in them and, you know, T'Challa, he's got the power um, of the Black Panther, depending on how you look at it, from either that ring, which I think might be the way they do it in the film, or the herbs that he, like, uses in the comics and the, the whole spiritual. He has power. He's, you know, he has the power of a panther, and it was awesome to see that chasing. Uh, and it, it ends, the whole scene ends with one of my favorite quotes from the entire movie. And I haven't seen the movie in a while, so I might butcher this, but it's when T'Challa, they're all in the van, you know, they're all chained up and they're heading towards Ross's facility. And T'Challa literally says, I am a king and a warrior. Tell me, talking to Steve Rogers, how long do you honestly think you can keep your friend safe? And I was just like, wow, that's such a great line. And T'Challa is such a badass. And I really like this movie. And, you know, I was really pumped. Uh, so that scene gets my number four spot. Moving right ahead to my number three spot. This scene was another one of those scenes that I just wanted to see. A whole movie just like this scene immediately after watching. I was like, pause. No, either play this scene again, play it back, dog. Or I want an entire movie of this going on right now. Okay, and this starts, and this is the scene, of course, where Peter Parker comes home to his Queen's apartment with a Queen's accent, no less, which is a big fucking deal. Uh, and I don't mean to yell at you, rah, but if you don't know why this is so awesome, if you don't understand the care and the respect that Kevin Feige and the Russo brothers brought to their version of Spider-Man in the MCU, you, then you're missing a big chunk of this puzzle, guys. You, it, this is so comic booky. It's it was incredible. But anyways, that Peter Parker comes home, and Iron Man, Tony Stark, is on his couch talking to his sexy Aunt May, and I just loved. The chemistry. They both know something weird is going on, but they're trying to act normal. Tony's talking about this scholarship thing, you know, and they're playing it cool, and then they go talk in the room, and he's denying the Spider-Man thing, and Tony's completely on to him, has been watching him for some time. There's this, like, found footage type of thing, or drone footage, security footage, of Spider-Man doing incredible feats, uh, which is a nice little way to throw some of that action in there without actually giving it to us. Um, but wow, what a great scene. I just love their chemistry. I don't know how many people they tried out for that role, but Tom Holland is absolutely perfect. So you've just got to give so many props to Marvel and the way they do things from the bottom to the top. And wow, perfect casting, man. I, I'm so pumped for Spider-Man Homecoming, especially because, of course, Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in that movie. In fact, he flew out to Atlanta late last week to start filming his scenes. I don't imagine that they're very involved, and I'm sure there's probably none with him as Iron Man, but he's going to interact with Peter in Homecoming, and it's going to be really cool. So that scene gets my number three spot. Number two. My number two spot might surprise a lot of you because I bet this is number one for a lot of people, and I really don't blame you if that is the case. This scene is the airport scene, the famous, the unbelievable, the incredible, the revered, the impossible airport scene, which was so long 
Guys, this scene has to be at least 15 minutes. I forget what they clocked it at. Uh, it was a big deal when they were doing the press junkets and everything before the movie was released. It's so long, and the Russos describe it as a double-page spread from a great comic book. Now, if you don't read comic books, what this literally means is that there are these things known as splash pages or splash panels, which take up an entire page. Okay, they're just the entire page is one panel, and they get a lot of like sweet detail in there, and they can show you a lot of things in there. But there are also these things called double page spreads, which literally take up two pages. You open up, and you literally have two pages of goodness of so many superheroes sprinkled throughout, so many details that you have to then go through and pick out yourself, and you take so much time on a two-page spread, but it's so worth it, and just, they add, it adds so much to a great book to have a great double-page spread in there, and this scene was treated as such, and it's just so brilliant for so many different ways. The back and forth, the relationships of these characters that have been established by eight to ten films, so much goodness in this scene. It was just, it was really just kind of hard to explain how dope this scene was how many great interactions and and the action itself was nuts it was absolutely nuts it like played like a symphony it had good notes here it picked up here it slowed down here crescendoed here giant man holy shit like just wow so good so good for so many different reasons oh and wanda damn wanda you strong girl like she really showed her stuff in that fight and i think moving forward we're going to find out just how strong she is which i think will be dangerous and up being dangerous for everybody on the entire team and in the marvel universe in general but just so much to talk about in that scene i mean you've seen it i i want to watch it over and over again it's so good so intricate and and they took they took so much time to do that scene it's very very impressive one of the best action sequences i've seen on film period and the airport scene gets my number two spot so now you might be asking yourself like if the airport scene didn't make his number one spot what could possibly be josh's number one what scene in the movie could have possibly surpassed that moment and i'll tell you right now it is the very ending of the film and stay with me here i'm going to explain exactly why this scene is so pivotal and so fucking good so stay with me on this now i am of course talking about the scene where they go to this secret base they are they believe and this is cap and tony they believe that what they are doing is going to stop and possibly fight um zemo and the the clones right the other um winter soldiers and they show up and the winter soldiers are dead and you kind of Zemo kind of reveals his hand talks about his plan and of course gets Captain America and Iron Man to want to kill them each other mostly Tony it's mostly Tony he wants to kill Cap because Cap knew that the Winter Soldier killed his mom right oh and the Winter Soldier's there too I should probably mention this uh, but you know that if you've seen the movie um, this was such a great scene because basically guys Civil War is a great movie but it was not the same caliber as Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is like a flawless film and you could take the superheroes out of it and it's like just a great espionage spy um, just just a great movie and I didn't really get that vibe from Civil War. I thought that like the superheroes were obviously an integral part of the plot which I guess kinda hurts it from being the same kind of a movie but beyond that Everything was kind of playing out the way that I knew it would. I, I didn't get a lot of surprises other than the, the uh, scene with Peter Parker. And it just was lacking something. And I was like, well, where's this Russo turn? Where's the turn? Where's that craziness that gets me to say, oh, shit. And I was waiting for it the whole movie. I, I really was. And then when Zemo reveals his plan reveals that he had been doing this the whole time and you start to see the pieces pull together and just the fact that you thought you were going to see these other winter soldiers and they're dead i was like there it is there's that turn i was looking for there's that magic and to me it pulled it all together that fight between them was incredible 
I love the fact that Black Panther snuck in behind them and he learns his lesson, essentially becoming the T'Challa that I know from the comics within this movie, which was just, wow, so brilliant of them to do, to have him have this misstep because of his father's death, he's not acting honorably, he's pissed, he wants vengeance, and then by the end of the movie, he sees the flaws in the other two, you know, mostly Cap and Iron Man, and he does not let Zemo kill himself, he does not kill Zemo, and he has that turn in the snow, and I was just like, wow, like, what a powerful scene, what a powerful way to end your movie. And like I said, it brought it all together. It gave me the note that I was that was missing. That I, I was like, well, where is that note? Where's that vibe, man? Where's this mise en scène? Like, it, I need there to be something more in this movie. It, it wasn't quite as Russo Brothers as I was expecting. Uh, and then the ending and the turn. And I know it's a little like unbelievable. Like you have to suspend your disbelief a lot to believe that Zemo knew all of these things and that he could really pull these strings the way that he did. But it's still brilliant, and it's still that turn, that thing that I've been looking for for the entire film. Um, what a nice payoff, man. It was just incredible. Much like the scene where Cap realizes that S.H.I.E.L.D. is actually Hydra, it's, it's, it's very similar for me. It accomplishes so much, such a great part of that movie. So that gets my number one spot for the Top 5 Tuesdays, my top five favorite moments of the Civil War movie. Go out and get a Blu-ray copy of it. Marvel's obviously not paying me to say this. I just think this movie's dope. Go get a copy. Go revel in the nerdiness. It's absolutely awesome. All right, guys, let's check that nerd card. The question is about a scene in the movie that pays homage to an Avengers cover. This was when Hawkeye is literally shooting an arrow that has Ant-Man on its tip. And the question is, what issue was that on the cover of? Answer the question in the comment section below. And you're definitely going to want to do that. It will get you five entries into the grand prize drawing for the September contest for the Den of Nerds. So all you have to do is be a subscriber and comment in video. But answer a nerd card question. Gets you five entries to the grand prize. Make sure you do that, guys. Like the video. Do all those awesome things. And as I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and nerdy day. See ya!